That's a lot of words. Which That's one's taller? Right. I have less hair now. I shaved my head. Oh Take shit. Take two. Welcome to Cutting Corners with Jim and Jake. <laughs> it's as good as it's gonna get. Okay. All right, today we're talking about tab and slots. Yeah, tab and slots are like a really cool design uh, feature that you can put into your parts. It can be used for self-fixturing. Um, we can go over a lot of different examples and stuff of that. Um, but yeah, it's a, tr it's a trick that we use on occasion. Yeah. Sorry, I made some tighter and some looser than others. No, that's good. Gonna show that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we have a couple parts here. I think the best way to talk about it is kind of going over like, what is it, yes. right, to start? It's a tab and a slot. Hold on, let's see. Dude. Tab, slot. And so what ends up happening is that that tab goes into that slot and it creates a joint, right? And so, you know, we, we use this same feature when we were doing our captive nuts, and that's a great way to essentially fixture or index this part into it. It can also be used essentially to hold a part in a certain location before you're gonna weld it and stuff, right? Yeah. Let's talk about the good applications. Like when would you wanna use this? Um, obviously, like you said, locating it. Uh, the reason why too, for fast assembly. So oftentimes if you're gonna weld two parts together, we've all been there, we're on our welding table and you know, especially if the material is not magnetic, you're trying to get it fixtured just right tab and slot design allows it to go together with either zero or minimal clamps. Um, so it's it's super fast to weld. Yeah, and it's one of those things like when I'm working in the shop, like my, my son's eight years old, he's not very good at holding things exactly straight, but I can keep him holding hold things together. Hold the damn together. flashlight. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and so like, I'm not having to have him hold it so that it's not in the right orientation. I just need to have him hold it so that the slot and the tabs are now indexed and right. stuff, and now I can do whatever I'm gonna do on the other side, right? Yeah, saves you a ton of time, especially with the layout too. Um, oftentimes, you know, if you if you need something exactly at, you know, four and three sixteenths inches, you know, across a, a piece of metal, doing that layout takes a lot of time. So add a slot in there, jab it in, you're good to go. Yeah, I mean, so this is actually a really good example of what you just talked yeah, show about, me, right? show me how this works. So, um, so these are, I bought an ambulance because I'm always doing random stuff. Um, and What's her my, name? Her, I think her name's gonna be Amber, but Amber. I almost feel like it's Amber, too- Amber Lance. That's Amber the ambulance, yeah, Amber Lance. Um, so Amber has a roof that is five foot 10. I'm five foot 10, but my wife is six foot, so she wasn't really happy about the height difference. So um, I'm extending the roof up 10 inches. And so with this, I'm gonna, I kind of have these like heavier um, 187 mild steel gussets that go in here but I want them to be essentially be separated out in a really nice way that I'm gonna weld in. And so what I ended up doing is kind of two different tab and slot methods. Delivery, delivery's here. So that's, that's your guys' metal for your parts getting delivered. Yeah. Um, so that tab and slot, I have two different things. I have one that's like an open, allows me to slide it into that. So you can see here, that slot is an open slot that that tab goes into. And then also we have that tab and slot on the back side. But what this does, I'm gonna flip it around for you, is that one, it makes it so that it can't twist this way and it's holding it left to right exactly where I want it. So now all I have to do is weld it here. I'm gonna do a fusion weld on the other side. I don't even have to have my son hold it. I don't even need clamps. This is just self fixturing, just yep. run through it. So, you know, you saw me kind of struggling a little bit. Uh, but that's actually what you want. Like, you don't want it too loose, you don't want it too tight. Tell me about your tolerances. Yeah, I mean, it depends on your application, right? And right. so if I'm gonna be welding, I try to keep my tab and my slots as tight as I possibly can so that I have a solid joint. Um, when you have a situation like this one right here where you have two bends, you have the tolerances of your bends, you have the tolerances of your material, you have the tolerances of the cuts, yep. all stacking on top of each other. I typically, on these ones right here, I have it set for 10 thousandths on each side. Actually, let's probably go to the board. Yeah. Um, okay, so I'm gonna draw a tab right here. You following me? Okay. <laughs> and then let's do a slot on the outside of it. So this is old, we'll color this my tab. So what I'm saying is, is that this and this, on that particular setup, 
I have set for 0 0.010 inches, so 10 thousandths of an inch. Um, and so it's 20 thousandths of an inch overall bigger. Typically, if it's just gonna be something simple, I'm gonna slide over here. Something simple, like it's just a simple joint that it's just my cuts and my material, you can chart back, back in this down to 0 0.005 and have a 10 thou overall dimension. That actually works really well with our tolerances and stuff of our cuts and our material that you can kind of see on the website. The, the thinner the material, the less allowance you need. So yep. it, when you go really Same thin, there. you may only need, you know, three thou all around. Um, you know, or, or a t I'm sorry, three thou per side. So a total of six. As you go, it's not even the right one. Um, as you go thicker, you're gonna wanna add additional tolerance. So uh, I think 10 thou all around is kind of the sweet spot for most mm -hmm. of our thicknesses, correct? Yeah, 10, 10 thou total. Yeah, if we go to like that half so inch five, aluminum. Five, five. Yeah, five, okay. five, five. Typically I would run it five and five, so 10 thou overall. If I go to my thicker aluminums, thicker steels. Yeah, the thicker you go, the more you want to give it. So yeah, that would be like, I would give it almost 20 thou on each side to make sure that I have a good a total of 40 thou. Yeah, a total of 40 Oh, thou. really? Okay. And that allows for any taper in the cut, et cetera. So yeah, because you have two different tapers that you're accounting for on that, yeah. right? You have the taper yeah. on the registration of those tabs and you have also the taper of the inside diameters and that's doubled, yeah. right? And so you have to account for all of these tolerances that are kind of what we call stacking up, right? It also it also depends on the material. So uh, half inch mild steel is actually in a cut with slightly less taper than half inch aluminum. Yeah. On half inch aluminum, we get a little more striation, uh, a little more dross. So maybe open it up a little bit more on thick aluminum than you would on thick mild steel. So we'll have to, we'll have to cover this with some sort of document at some point. Yeah, and I yeah. actually think it's, it's actually, this is an, opens up to another video talking about how different materials cut differently and right. why. Um, uh, real quick, sorry. Uh, no, the other thing good. that I noticed you did is you dog-eared uh, yeah. or chamfered this to allow for the inside bend radius. So anytime that you're gonna have uh, a fit up in a, in a bend channel, you wanna make sure that you don't have a square edge in here because we always have a radius when we bend. Yeah, yeah, 100%. I mean, I could have been fancier. I could have like matched the radius with the die and the punch combination that we yeah. were gonna use here. But now I'm starting to play fancy games and I don't need it to be fancy. Yeah. So it's, it's one it. of those things of like that kiss, right? So keep it simple, stupid. Yep. Um, it's good on these kind of situations with the tab and slot to also keep it very simple, right? So if you can afford for the tolerance to be a little bit larger, by all means do it. Don't keep it any tighter than you have to. Uh, should we talk about dog bones real quick? Yeah. I guess so we actually, don't have a dog bone I know, example. I, I dropped the ball um, for this video um, to make one, but we can use- We can B-roll. Cut actually, to the B-roll of a dog bone. Do a dog bone design. And that's simply putting a corner, a hole in each corner, and then softening those edges, radiusing those edges into those corners. <laughs> uh, anyway, it just allows, a, a dog bone is gonna allow you to have a perfectly 90 degree uh, axis on your tab. Yeah. And then the dog bone on the slot will allow for any tolerance. It's just a little bit easier to fit up. So but anyway, check that out. So yeah, that actually kind of leads us to some strategies and stuff when you're making your tab and slots for strength. So if you're using this for like fixturing, for welding and stuff, you can leave your corner square. square. You're gonna weld all that stuff up. But if you're gonna use that slot and tab combination as something that's gonna register and like not be welded in the end, maybe you're using bolts or something to hold this thing together, there is some things that you wanna consider when you're making that slot and it kind of goes to his dog bone. So I'm gonna actually, we're gonna just kind of draw this up really quick. I'm left handed so it's easier to flip. Okay. So when he says dog bone, essentially, you put a circle in each corner and it kind of looks like a dog bone, right? So your cuts end up looking like this. So when your tab is in here, you end up having this radius corner on the outside. This allows you to have these square corners come up into this area without having any interference. It allows you to kind of keep a tighter tolerance. Um, this is really good if you want your thing to be oriented correctly and all that kind of stuff. Uh, should we mention, especially in, in materials that are gonna be cut on our CNC routers, that's where it's really critical because we have a tooling radius. Yep, yeah, you would have a radius in this corner. So you can have the router come in and open up that corner, allowing you to have a, essentially a square corner yeah. without having one. On laser, 
our beam diameter is usually six thou to eight thou, so the, the radius of our beam is, is almost non-existent. Uh, but when we're working on CNC router, typically we're gonna have a radius of, uh, what, 60 eight. thou? Yeah, 60, 60, 60, 63, okay. yeah, we use about an eighth yeah. inch bit on most materials. Yeah. So going back to this example, one big thing that you wanna do, I'm gonna switch to red, is radius these corners. And so what we just talked about here with this dog bone, you know, you have to be careful about this corner kind of coming up into it. But this radius, what you'll see is if you don't weld these joints, you'll see cracking in your parts that come off this joint. This is like, in like really kind of technical terms, this is a stress, stress riser, riser, right? Yeah. So these stress risers can come through here. By putting a radius in this corner here and essentially making your tab look like that, completely takes those stress risers away. But you're conflicting a little bit because we just said add dog bone, but then add a radius. Yeah, so dog bones, if I was to add a dog bone on this, I would radius this corner in and then radius this corner out. Got gotcha. you. Right, and so put those radiuses in here because if this is a sharp corner, you still get stress risers here. Um, so that's just one thing to consider. If you're gonna weld it, typically a lot of my tab and slots I weld, I just run it square corners. I'm gonna fill it all in there. Um, you're gonna have the welds create larger stress risers than the tab and slot's going to. Um, so let's talk about other things to avoid uh, yeah. when tab and slot may not be ultra successful. I'll, I'll tell you in a single plane, tab and slot on thin materials ain't great. Uh, you know, you can do like a zero tolerance, you can jam it in with a hammer, but on thin materials, they're gonna be flexible and you're not gonna have a lot of success. If you retain this on another plane, then it's still gonna work for fixturing, but single plane, it's a little weird, so maybe on thin materials, um, try not to use it exclusively to, to locate. Yeah, if you're gonna add a finishing, like painting, even with a rattle can or powder coating. Powder coat, yeah. Um, taking consideration the thickness add that you have to your tabs in the internal of your slots, you might make it too tight now and you're either gonna have to grind your powder coating away or your yep. paint away to make it actually fit again. And how thick is our powder coating typically? Do we know? Uh, I mean, you're, I'm, I I'm going remember. off my head. It's, I think it's, it's two right to, here. I think it's two to three. It's right. Yeah, it's right here. Put it right here. Jesus, I have no idea. Uh, um, it's, it's in milk. I don't. I think it's like two or three thou. Yeah, right? I think it's two. Something I think it's like two that. or three thou on both sides. Don't quote me. It's right, right here. It's right here. <laughs> um, uh, oh, bending. Yeah, which we actually talked we about. We kind of talked about bending. Yeah. yeah, just give it give it a little bit of uh, clearance to allow for the bend radius, and then alternatives like if. Uh, What's, let's say my application isn't gonna allow for this, or I'm not welding it or whatever, what else could we use? Uh, I mean, you could use clamps, your small children, your friends, yeah. if you have friends, yeah. um, you know, that kind of stuff. Not you your can, wife, they get mad. Nope, they don't wanna be out there. They don't like the splatter of the MIG weld or yeah. anything around them and stuff. Uh, but the nuts and bolts. Yep. Like, yeah, nuts like and we bolts, said, pam hardware. Yep. I mean, like on this one right here, we can use this as an example. I could have made this have a 90 degree bend and have hardware on it. I could have slid it in there and ran hardware on it. But um, I have oh. a welder, so. Yeah, the other thing that you could do is uh, get this whole thing made on a five axis CNC mill yeah, uh, out of a solid piece of billet, which would uh, I'm sure be really reasonable in cost. Yeah, and probably like two to three months lead time. Yeah, it's not, not bad. So but yeah, that's an alternative, but. Yeah, it anyways, is. Yeah, I think that's about it. Yeah. Okay. Unless you want to keep going. Yeah. Your sign off. You gotta, oh, you gotta give I don't remember sign the sign off. You gotta tell me you love oh, me. Oh, okay. Yep. Yeah. Love you. Bye. Love you. Bye. You're supposed to say it kind of like, because they don't, they don't, what? you don't oh, know if they sorry. love you back. Okay. So you just gotta be like, I love you. Lo love you. Bye. I love you. Bye.